Dear learners, welcome to this session and in this session we would be discussing the process of self-help group formation that is SHG formation. Uh, this is very important aspect we have understood uh, many other aspects of SHG like concept, what is SHG, what is the need for SHG, what are the different advantages or the strengths of SHG. But it is very very important to understand how they are formed. We know what they are, but how they are formed that is very important to understand. Now first aspect we need to understand before going to the stages of formation uh, of SHG, it is, it is important to understand what is group mobilization. Why is it important in the formation of SHG? When we talk about the initial phase of group mobilization, it usually includes the awareness, the theme camps, then it has the Prabhat fairies. Prabhat means morning and fairies means going around. So Prabhat fairies where uh, people go uh, together uh, and they keep on announcing, they keep, door, keep on telling people from door to door uh, about specific issues. Uh, placing the posters, the charts, writing on the walls, uh, carrying out certain street plays, carrying out puppet shows with certain themes, etc. In this case, the people, they come together, they discuss the issue and this is known as group mobilization. Then you have the participatory rural appraisal techniques like transact walks. I gave you an example in previous, uh, in earlier sessions uh, about uh, the uh, water harvesting uh, source in a particular village where there was a scarcity of water. Now transect walk, they help people to understand, they map down the, uh, the length of the walk and the places they need to go uh, through certain mechanism uh, where the people, the old villagers, they are experienced enough and they touch the particular soil and try to find out that it is good for mining, it is good for water, it is good for some other source, it has, uh, one can sow seeds on it uh, and one can do farming on that particular land. So in this, in this transect walk, people go around and try to find out the places which are beneficial, which are important, which can be useful for the uh, society. Then the social mapping is there. In social mapping, uh, the communities are divided, their living standards, their uh, economic uh, status, their educational status. Through that, the social ma mapping is done. The wealth and resources ranking and timelines to build in the rapport between each other is done. This is again a form of group mobilization. Then you have participatory survey which can be undertaken to explore the availability of the markets, the social structure, the existing the credits and debit system, the potential for the goods which can be used or produced by women. I gave an example of bamboo weaving, uh, making products out of bamboo. So this is also a potential which is produced by women in particular region. Then need assessment and sensitization of opinion leaders is very, very important. So one should understand what is required. It is not that, that in certain areas, the self-help group related to education is important. In certain areas, the SHG related to health is important. In certain areas, SHG related to agriculture is important. So one has to understand what is the need of that particular society, how it can be mobilized and how the members can come together. So this is the first aspect that is the group mobilization. Then comes an important aspect. Now this is everything is happening before the formation of SHG, right? So this is before the formation of SHG where you have to identify the leaders. Now there is a sociometry techniques where you need to understand the, it is, it is a kind of a technique which measures the relatedness. Relatedness means that how uh, communicable, how accessible that individual is. This is very important to identify the leader for the SHG. Uh, how, how he or she, usually in this case it would be she, uh, has the social contacts, the nature, the personality, 
the community involvement, all these things they come under the sociometry techniques and this is helpful in identifying the leaders. Now this is the initial stage which is also characterized by number of meetings in the group discussions. The, now, now this can be uh, done through different ways. Then resource and social mapping is undertaken on a regular basis which proves to be a useful exercise for building the rapport, enhance, building the rapport between each other, enhancing the group cohesion and collecting information. This uh, helps in uh, avoiding the conflict between each other. Rapport building is very important. If there are 10 members, there are 12 members, each and every member should be, should be, should have a specific, have a good rapport with each other. They should have group cohesiveness within themselves because if it is not there, then the conflicts with, will arise. So, so that is the, the major aspect of SHG that people should be of uh, at the same mental level. So it is also useful in participatory planning and monitoring the activities. Now what activities are there? There are three different kinds of activities which are involved in the formation of SHG. The first activity is the capacity building and training. Now in this case the capacity is built, uh, capacity building and training of the members is done. This is done by giving them a kind of workshop, small workshops uh, of uh, from other group members or from the trained members or from the self-promoting agencies like government, like NGOs, uh, like uh, elders, uh, like uh, the uh, panchayat leaders. So they try to develop the capacity of the members of the group and they give them a specific kind of a training, how to handle the money, uh, how to handle the group conflicts, how to handle, manage the group. So all these activities, uh, they come under the training part. Now they have to have the group meetings and they have to have visits for awareness, exposure and motivation of each other, motivation of people, motivation of themselves and motivation of each other. So group meetings are important in dealing with all these things. So they have to be aware of things and issues and challenges happening in the society. Now, we come to the different parts of the formation of or different steps of the formation of SHGs. Who initiates the formation of SHG? Who is the person who initiates the formation of SHG? Because most of the in most of the cases in villages, people don't even know what is SHG and how it can be formed. So who initiates the formation of SHGs? So it can be initiated by a local community member who has the skills to address the common problem. Now there can be people, usually there are people where uh, the usually elders are there who, where the people they go to them and they take uh, suggestions from them, they take advice from them for a particular uh, problem. So the local community member uh, does have the skills to address a common problem. Now this person acts as the facilitator, acts as the catalyst in forming the SHGs. Such a person is often well known within the community. Usually this person may be educated and try to build in uh, bring in the best of the knowledge from the outside world. So formation of SHGs can be assisted by an NGO or local governing body as well. So these are some of the people who initiate the formation of SHG because it is very difficult for the rural population to even think of what SHG is. So there must be some kind of a facilitator for them. Now what is the basis of formation? Now the second step would be what is the basis of formation? Who forms the group? So groups are formed based on some similarities amongst the members of the community and these similarities can be related to the poverty, the living conditions, uh, the same community part, the same place of origin. So these, uh, these can be of different uh, and in this case one, is, uh, one thing is very very important that each 
member of the community uh, should have a similar living condition. So, all these things should be similar amongst themselves. So, they can be number of SHGs of different levels. Now, the other aspect is who is approached to join the SHG? How you reach to the people and tell them to join the SHG? There is only one earning member in the fam family. That person can be approached. There is a lack of common facilities like drinking water, sanitization or housing. So, you have to identify. The facilitator tries to identify people having these features. There is high rate of illiteracy amongst the families. The children in the family do not have access to education. Uh, they are just wandering around. They, they do not have a goal to work on. So, all these things uh, they, they are seen. Now, in this case, I uh, will give you an example of migrant workers where usually the, um, there is one earning member and in that case and the family is quite big. So, uh, and they lack lot, lot of basic facilities as well. So, these people, they are approached by the facilitator to join the group. Now, this is very important to understand because usually what happens is like we tend to join the groups where uh, people are automatically self-dependent and they, they are independent enough to take the decisions. But in this case, uh, the things are very diff different. That is why it is very important to have SHGs. Uh, in this case, uh, again, we, we, we can say there are families where the alcoholism is there high rate of alcoholism is there, drug addicts are there. So, those family members are also approached. The elderly family, they have elderly people, they have sick people in their house, they are approached. The family eats maybe two meals with, with uh, or less, maybe one meal per day. They ha do not have the paying capacity. The family belongs to a backward class where they are exploited. So, these people, they are approached to join the SHG. Now, how does the formation begin? This is another aspect. Now, we have identified, we have uh, mobilized the group, we have identified the leader. Now, the leader is going around and trying to approach people of different communities and to form the group. Now the formation begins. Now the first meeting is held with the elders and the community leaders. Usually it happens in the panchayats because it has to be told that this kind of group is going to come into existence. This kind of group will participate in decision making. This kind of group will help the community at large. So, encouragement for community participation is very important and one tries to ensure that everyone is aware that meetings are not conducted to distribute any subsidy or money. They ensure that everyone is aware that meetings are not conducted to distribute any subsidy or money. This is very, very important because in most of the cases when you try to facilitate the poor, uh, they tend to because they are so much deprived, it is not their fault. They are so much deprived that they just look for the benefits and the monetary benefits is very important. So, the, they, they think that this meeting is for distributing the subsidy, maybe for distributing the rations and distributing the money. So, they need to make, make they need to be aware enough, the meetings, uh, uh, the members should make them aware that this meeting is specifically for forming the group, not for distributing the subsidy or money. So, village elders are taken into confidence and community leaders are explained about the principles of SHGs. Now, this can be done through self-promoting groups. Then, the members they try to ask the, the members who are to form. They are not exactly the members as of now. So, they ask for the support of the elders, support of the community leaders so that they can form the group. So, this is how the formation of the group begins. Now, when the members have met, they come together, 
they meet they meet with each other and after the support of the community leaders and elders the members can be can can call for a meeting all the members they are called for a meeting by the leader the community leaders uh, and elders after getting the consent from them because uh, why is it important to have the consent of the leaders and the elders uh, this is very important for the smooth functioning of the shgs so the community leaders and the elders they are called for a meeting and in the first meeting several questions are put up by the members uh, and uh, they try to understand the concept of shg they try to understand why shg is being formed they try to understand the strengths of shg and then they they get satisfied they are convinced that this group is going to help them so the working of the group is discussed they formulate a chart where they try to find out what is to be done in a later stage so usually it takes 5 to 6 months for forming an shg uh, for forming a shg and nearly an year for stabilization so therefore that is why uh, in uh, one of the sessions i had categorically stated that usually it takes 6 months for the bank loans to be taken uh, through the banks because uh, initially the banks they don't come into the picture it takes 6 months so this is the reason that normally it takes 5 to 6 months in formation of shgs uh, and uh, for because all the members are new they need to understand the working they need to be convinced about the whole concept and nearly an year for stabilization and then it continues now the other aspect is now the members have come together the meeting has been done the working plan has been discussed now how does the work of shg begin this is important so few initial meetings uh, are uh, held up and then uh, the decision regarding the group leadership and the responsibilities is taken the members they try to learn the importance of record keeping and documentation this is very important because they are not aware of these things i mean it's normal because they don't don't even have the money to eat uh, two full meals so how will they uh, save the money and try to keep a record of the money they are having so they are being taught about it so that capacity building and training in this case is very important so the members they learn the importance of record keeping and documentation and uh, the schedule for the meetings is uh, decided it can be um, uh, weekly it can be fortnightly it can be monthly and then the members they start uh, the bookkeeping process now each member does the uh, bookkeeping for themselves and there is a common uh, leader who does it for all now uh, this is the last aspect uh, which is which needs to be discussed and these are the stages of uh, shg formation now these are the four stages of shg formation and these stages which we have discussed uh, earlier uh, this is a comprehensive uh, uh, comprehensive idea about these stages of shg formation now the first stage in this case is the forming stage and in the forming stage what happens is uh, the initial um, group mobilization members are being selected the uh, members with uh, same uh, mindset they come together they take the consent of the elders and the community leaders and these members then they form a group the members the usually the members are women the members can be from 10 to 12 uh, and the maximum uh, is the 20 now this is the forming stage then we have the storming stage now in storming stage is very important as i said that the capacity building and the training aspects uh, they come into picture so the storming stage stage is very very important uh, because the brainstorming sessions are there people ask questions people are inquisitive people need to understand why what is the cause for the group uh, how to achieve the goals what are the stages uh, through which the group will uh, go all these things they are need in this particular 
part. Now then we come to the um, uh, norming stage. In norming stages the rules are formulated. Though SHG is not a formal organization, it is an informal uh, happening. So in norming stage the rules are formulated within the SHG that this person would be the leader, this person would keep the bookkeeping, this person will deal with the, the members of the society, uh, the, the, the groups will have the decision making aspects, each one will, would participate in equal manner, there will not be anybody who is, a, uh, who is a static member, who just is a witness, who just comes and goes without uh, participating in the, um, in the group activities. So all these rules, the informal rules within the group are formulated and this is the norming stage. So that each and every member of the group understands what is important, what is needs to be done and how to achieve the goals. In norming stage it is also told the saving uh, benefits, the forms of savings, the investment benefits by the self-promoting agencies and then they form the norming stage. How much money to save? how much money to invest, how much loan to be dispersed amongst the members, how much loan can be uh, given to others. So all these uh, stage, uh, all these uh, rules are formulated. Now the last stage is the performance stage. Now this performance stage is very very important in the sense is that it tries to uh, see how the SHG is performing because in every case whether it is SHG or whether it is an individual's life in starting from the introduction or the basic stage you reach to a level where you need to perform where you need to show that this group is achieving something this group is working for a cause this group is able to achieve uh, able to eradicate the problems from the society for which it is working and for which it came to with the members came together to form the group. So this is the performance stage. So these are the four stages of SHG formation that is forming stage, storming stage, norming stage, performance stage and the names itself suggest what kind of activities are happening in different stages. Now we come to the uh, summary of the whole part, uh, I think it is not visible, we can, uh, we will just uh, discuss the summary in the senses, uh, uh, we first we start with the uh, group mobilization. The second uh, part is identifying the leader, who will be the leader, the third part is uh, formulating the uh, trying to find out or identifying the cause the problem it's kind of problem identification now the third part or uh, the fourth part would be the group coming together and meeting is arranged then the fifth part is forming the rules forming the working mechanism of the group and the sixth and the last part is to implement whole rules and try to achieve the goals within a specific period of time. Now in this case where one thing is very important when we talk about the process of formation of SHG, uh, one thing is very important is that we need to understand that uh, the whole idea of forming the SHG, the process of formation of SHG is to bring the community together. It is not only the 10, 12 or 20 members of the group. It is for the benefit of the community as a whole, benefit of the society as the whole in which this group is functioning. So these are, the, this is what is the process of uh, the uh, uh, formation of SHG. So we will just wind up here and uh, we will we'll, uh, try to understand the other aspects of SHG in different sessions. Thank you so much.